Hi, I'm Mark Podell with Dorian Scales. We're at our facility here in St. Charles, Illinois. And we've got a video today on how to calibrate your scales. So um, this calibration process is common among our 7000XL, 4300, 2200, 2200 CW, 7400, DS100, 8100 intrinsically safe product, 8200 intrinsically safe product and our baggage skill. So we try and make everything as similar as possible so that you don't need to learn different calibration routines for every product you buy from us. So uh, you want to calibrate your scale, but before you do so, we want to make sure that the scale is operating properly because if you have a scale that has some issues, it's not going to, you can calibrate the scale perhaps, but it may not improve the performance of the scale whatsoever. So first thing you want to do is just kind of inspect the scale. We've got cables, we've got cords. We want to make sure the cords, that there's no smash points, that there's no conductors that are being exposed. It hasn't been pinched to the point where maybe the conductors internal to the cable might be broken. Um, if that's the case, you might need a new load cell. And I wouldn't try and calibrate the scale just because it probably is not functioning properly because of those issues. Um, and so the first thing we do is we evaluate the scale, we put some hand weight on there, does it return to zero? Is it flighty? Is it, is it unstable? There's no air currents here, there's no vibration, and so as we touch the scale, it always goes back to zero, so this scale is functioning pretty well. Other thing that you'd want to do is take the platter off. Sometimes we have smaller platforms, bench scales, sometimes we have bigger platforms but they all have some commonalities to them. So we always have a load cell that's inside. Uh, we also have overload stops in each corner. We've got adjustable feet. So things that may make your scale not operate properly is the overload stops could be missing, could be misadjusted. Your scale might not be stable because the feet aren't level, aren't leveling to the scale. We have a bubble overload, a bubble um, indicator here and so we want to make sure that the scale is somewhat level it doesn't have to be perfectly level to be accurate um, we take that into account when we design these products and the load cells are designed as well if you have a missing foot and the scale is going to the, the scale is going to be unstable so we'll want to replace those and if you do have to re-level the feet just run them all the way up into the scale base and then level them from there so if you ha you don't want your feet sticking out like an inch and then there's another one that and it just doesn't look right and and it makes the scale a little more susceptible to damage because you could you could bend the foot and then you can't run it in or out you also want to make sure that the spider is not twisted um, if it's twisted and you put the platter back on the platter might be contacting the edge of the platform um, in these corners because we always want to, we always have a little overlap of our platter to the platform um, and so we just want to make sure that we go through a process there. Um, there's a part, there's an overload stop that's also underneath the load cell. And so what we usually do is take a little business card and you can wipe it underneath there. Let's make sure that there's nothing underneath the load cell. There's not stuff in here that could prevent free, free motion of weighing um, so that, uh, that the platform actually has a chance to perform. The other thing you want to do is all of our products have a label on the base and you're going to get some important information here and the information is is what's the capacity of the scale so this one happens to be 25 pounds and something called an e-min and so the e-min is essentially when we send these into NTEP and their legal for trade products they say this is as accurate as the scale can be under certain conditions. So they test it under all sorts of crazy conditions like you know different temperature ranges. They make sure the product if you have it in a cold environment and take it to a warm environment that the scale is not is still going to be accurate. And so one of the most important things to take from this label is the capacity. So you're not going to want to set the capacity of the indicator to 50 pounds if it's a 25 pound base. You can't put 50 pounds when the scale is only rated for 25 pounds. The other thing is, is the count by. So when we set the resolution of the scales, just note that scales only count certain ways. So the resolution means, how does it count? So it counts by ones, twos, or fives. So what does that mean? So 
the scale would read 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0, or 2, 4, 6, 8, 0, or 5, 0, 5, 0. So the scale can't, resolution can't be set to 3, for instance, where it's 3, 6, 9, and then what, right? It doesn't work. So, um, so we want to make sure that we set the scale to the resolution that's recommended on the platform. You can double that resolution if you want to. So for instance, if you have a scale that's rated, a uh, platform that's rated for a tenth of a pound, for instance, the most that you're going to want to push that scale platform to resolution is 0 0.05 pounds. And if you need stuff more accurate than that, that's possible, but then we have to do special things to that platform. It's just something to keep in mind. And so, um, so we just want to make sure that the scale is in, in good working order first. And if it's not, the calibration is not. Um, number two, um, so you want to always use calibration test weights that are calibrated and approved. You know, they're going to look like this and they're going to have a calibration certificate and you're going to want to use that. If you can't use that and accuracy is not the most important thing to your product, that's okay. We're going to show you a little bit later how to calibrate the scale with any test weight that you so choose. Maybe you put it on another scale and use it as a reference that you know is calibrated and you can put it on this one and, um, and then we can get a suitable calibration out of it. Okay, so what we're going to do is enter the calibration process here. And so essentially what's going to happen is um, we're going to press zero and unit simultaneously. And, and then once we do that, it's going to show the audit counters. Um, and then it's going to say, hey, enter the code. So the code is one, two, three, four, five presses of zero and then one press of units, you'll see one calibration. So now we're in here. Number one, any changes that you make, they can be uh, aborted by just unplugging the scale and turning it off before you exit the calibration routine. Once you see saved on the display, it's saving those parameters. So once you get into this part of the scale, you really want to be careful. We're not going to go in here and press buttons. And, and if you think you did something wrong, just go ahead and pull it and pull the plug. It won't save any of this, any of the changes that you made if you think you made a mistake. And then go ahead and come back into the into the setup routine once again. So some of the nice things about uh, having a full keypad here is we're able to dial in the capacity weights. We're able to dial in what the span calibration is. We'll go into that a little bit later. Um, and it's also nice because you can jump to parameters as well. So. Uh, the easiest way to go through these menus is we're going to go ahead and just press zero and it goes into that calibration menu. So it's at one cal. We have a menu structure that's based on numerics and you can always just go ahead and just type in that number if you want to. So we've entered the calibration procedure and so right now it says 50 pounds. So you look at the enunciator here for pounds and if we press zero uh, we can change the unit from pounds to kg. So we always tell people that whatever you set the capacity and the unit to on the capacity setting here is really what you want to calibrate the scale with. Um, so it doesn't get confusing to the operator. So if you're out of the, you know, anywhere where you're using metric, let's go ahead and set this to what the metric um, desired capacity would be in kg and not in pounds so that it's not confusing so that when somebody comes to the scale later has kg weights it's automatically going to want to calibrate in kg so right now we notice that hey this is 50 pounds we need to change this because we have a 25 pound base and i go ahead and press 25 hit enter and then i exit this menu and we flash what the capacity is so you make sure that you didn't make a mistake so it says 25 pounds the next thing we're going to do is the count by. So uh, the count by is automatically going to default when we change the capacity to what we call 5,000 divisions, which is going to be what's shown on the label right here. And so this one says 0 .001. That's going to be um, 5,000 divisions. And so what we're going to do is, in this case, we're going to go ahead and accept that and move forward. Okay, so we have two calibration modes uh, that we do. So we do calibration zero, and then we do a span calibration where there's a heavier weight on the scale. Um, if we do a cal zero, 
and let's say you have a conveyor piece on here that's always on the scale at all times, we're going to want to have that conveyor piece on there. In this case, it's just an empty platter. Sometimes we see people mount things to the platter. If that's the case and it's always on the scale, we want that on the scale when we do the calibration. Um, and so what we're going to do is press zero to launch the Cal Zero. You're doing a countdown here. So if you see this countdown reset, uh, it's because you have too much vibration in the area. Maybe there's air currents. And so if that's the case, there's one solution to that. Just go ahead and take this into a office area to do the calibration, set it on the floor um, if there's no vibrations on the floor. But if it continues resetting and you've removed all vibration and air currents, you probably have a different situation there and you might need a new load cell. So now we've went to the step of the span calibration and it's prompting me for 25 pounds. And so let's say we don't have 25 pounds. Um, we've got a 50 pound test weight. You can't calibrate with more than the capacity of scale. And so the minimum weight that you really want to do is 10% of the scale capacity. So maybe in this instance, maybe a five pound weight uh, would work. I probably wouldn't, I wouldn't calibrate with two and a half pounds. Um, if you do have another scale that was just officially calibrated, and let's say you have a bin of uh, nuts and bolts and you put it on the scale, other scale and it's 23.03 pounds, you can go ahead and just dial that in here. Um, in our case, we have calibrated test weights. And so I'm going to use five pounds. Um, another pro tip is if your scale is always used at a certain weight, like it's going to be used from eight pounds to 12 pounds, and we're not putting more than that on there, I'd go ahead and calibrate the scale with 10 pounds because then you're going to be more accurate right exactly where you're using the scale at all times. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and this is the beauty of the keypad is you can just go ahead and press 5, hit enter. It says go ahead and put 5 pounds on there. We go ahead and release our hands from the scale. It counts down. We've got a real stable environment here. You see saved. And now all of a sudden, hey, what happened here? I thought I calibrated the scale. And then why is it reading 22.70? So 2.2. .2. So when you press the zero in the units button, sometimes the units might change. So one pro tip here is if you're always weighing in the same unit at all times, you can go into the scale parameters. We show this in a different video. You can go in the scale parameters and turn off all the other units you never use. And it's probably a good thing to do that anyway so that um, operators don't accidentally um, say, hey, I'm weighing in kg instead of pounds. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this back to pounds. The reason we go right to the weigh mode is so you don't have to remove weight. So let's say you have a thousand pound scale, you just put 500 pounds of 50 pound weights on here. It automatically comes back to the weigh mode and shows you that, hey, this is an accurate calibration, 5.00. So once again, if you see the scale fluttering around, um, that's really not something that you want. And we will show you how to dial in the capacity um, and, the, uh, and the span span weight um, with the 7000 XL, which is only have three buttons on it. So there's a process where you have to press some of the key buttons and scroll through. And it's a little bit harder than, than just using a full keypad. The difference in cost upgrade to a keypad unit is not a big number. So uh, we always find it, if you're calibrating your scales a lot in your facility, uh, we'd recommend the keypad just because hey, it's a little bit easier to use. And then another pro tip is, if you say, well, I don't want my operators having access to those, all those keys, that's not a problem. We can go ahead and disable most of them. So I would say that, um, you know, that's the calibration process. If you do have additional questions, you go to the web page, duranscales.com, and you look up your particular model. On there is our technical manual. So you can download the technical manual. Um, if you do have questions, you can contact us at tech at duranscales.com. If you do have questions about your product, um, things should be easy to set up and configure. And so we have some other videos to show you how to do some of the more common items that, uh, that you might want to change in your scale. So thank you for your time and uh, happy weighing.